Today we're going to do a video about travel tips and kind of secrets I've discovered from my travels around the world. There's some things that you guys might have heard about before. I'm not going to share like, oh, let's use packing cubes and, you know, make sure you look up travel scams. There's a lot of things you really should know already and, and find from other videos. But there's a few things that I think maybe some people wouldn't think about, so I want to share those with you. So number one, the first tip, and this is something I always do, I do it in the airport right before I, before I go out into the community wherever I'm going, I always try to get a local SIM card. They're pretty much your key to access all sorts of information you might need. can be useful for finding directions, looking for things to do, and communicating with people if there's an emergency or you got to find a hot date on social media, uh, get in touch with your family, whatever it is. But you have a SIM card, you're connected to the world, you can do anything you need to do. Of course, when you have your SIM card, there is a situation where you have to get the, the SIM card from your your home community your home provider out of the phone and you got to get in the the new sim card that you're replacing it with from your location your destination and if you've ever done it before you see on the back of the phone there's a little tiny hole nothing we have on our normal stuff fits in there what you need to do and this is a tip you need to bring along a paper clip or a safety pin or if you happen to have a sim card remover but who has one of those right and you use that, you stick it in that hole, and it pops the SIM card out. So if you're going back through the same airport and you need to put another previous card in, you can do that really easily. And ladies, you have a special option. You can use the back of an earring. The post in an earring most of the time will fit in there. Um, doesn't work for us, though, guys. So you've got your phone with your SIM card all, all ready to go. You've got data. You want to use travel apps. This is our next tip. I like to use the app TripIt. I use the free the free version. Basically, you email all of your travel plans to the app, and it organizes them into an itinerary um, step by step. All your flights, your hotels, your rental cars, <clears throat> everything you need, all in one place. You can add in custom things if you have a, an outing you want to go on or a tour that you want to do. Another part of the travel apps I've always used, as long as it's been out, I've used Google Trips. And with Google Trips, you have the option of online um, and offline maps. You can download them. Unfortunately, they're going to be phasing this out and making it part of the, the general Google app. So I don't know how that's going to work. But looking forward, we'll figure out a solution. There's going to be other apps that have that ability. The third and final app that I would use under this tip of using travel apps, I would recommend you use Google Translate. If you get stuck and you don't know the language and you really need to uh, get some help or ask for directions, Google Translate will help get you through. It's not perfect, but it does the job. And you can download it and do offline translation. Our fourth tip, if you are like me, you like to listen to a lot of music when you're on the plane, the train, or even just having some downtime in the hotel or you know, out walking about in, in wherever you're traveling, you're going to use your Bluetooth headphones. They might be like this or the over ear type, but eventually these batteries don't last that long. They eventually run out and so you don't have music anymore and that's kind of irritating. So through trial and error and just running out of battery and not being able to listen to music, I've learned that you always want to have a regular old fashioned pair of plug in headphones because they will last and they will don't drain um, your battery. You don't have to use Bluetooth. So your phone lasts longer, your iPod, if that's what you're using, lasts longer, and you don't have to rely on the batteries and the Bluetooth headphones. Tip number five, this one is actually pretty important because we all have so many electronics that we're going to use when we travel. I always bring a power bank, if not two. One part of this tip, you want to make sure they are under the um, airline limit for lithium batteries, otherwise they won't let you carry them, um, particularly in your check bag. But if, even in your carry-on, I think there's a certain limit. This is uh, tip number six. Again, learned from many trips where I've needed to uh, figure this out. Always bring in your luggage a small nail trimmer. No blades on it or anything, so TSA is not going to give you a hard time. But you'll inevitably need to trim your nails on a trip. Anything lasting over a few days to a week, your nails are going to grow and you're going to realize that. Maybe you start picking them or biting them, but it's just not a good, not a good idea. Then you get hangnails, and inevitably it happens. So, 
pick yourself up one of these. I before I actually remember to bring, started to remember to bring it. I would always end up buying one. I have four or five pairs laying around from trips. The next tip, and this is something that again is kind of common sense, but people forget about it, is uh, always bring along a couple pens. Bring one pen, um, one or two pens, and some paper or a small notepad. The pen is the pen and notepad are good for taking notes if you need to get some information down and you don't have your phone or leaving a note for someone. But really, the main thing you're going to use this for is when you're on the plane, you're going to have to fill out arrival cards to tell who you are, your passport, and how long you t intend to stay at your destination. And if you're really fancy, you bring along a second pen and you can share this with someone on the plane, maybe your attractive seatmate that you want to talk to, strike up a conversation like, hey, oh, you need a pen? I've got one right here, ready to go. So that is uh, tip number seven. Some of you guys already know this one. Tip number eight, remember to put travel alerts on your credit cards. And if you can, this is, a, this is kind of learned from uh, School of Hard Knocks. Bring along debit cards from two different banks and accounts and keep them in separate places. So maybe you carry one with you when you're out and you always have one tucked in your bank, or I'm sorry, in your bag, tucked away and you're not really going to use it. And I will tell you a little bit more about this at the end. There's a reason for that. Um, a very pretty good story. So we'll get to that at the end. The next tip is always wear synthetic clothes. I travel with completely uh, synthetic wardrobe, including my shorts, my shirts, underwear, socks, my shoes. They're lightweight. They can be washed in the sink if you want to use some shampoo or actually get some laundry detergent. That works too. They dry quickly overnight and they don't get as stinky or as dirty. They don't get stained as easily as cotton clothes in my experience. Um, you may have to spend a little more money. They tend to be more expensive than cotton and other kind of blends, but they are worth the, the money and for your comfort and convenience. Related to number nine, number 10, tip 10, pack light. Pack really light so you can travel with only a carry-on. Keep it around seven kilograms. For many international airlines, particularly the budget ones, they have about a seven kilogram, 7.2 kilogram weight limit for a carry-on bag before you have to pay fees. So if you do this, you don't have to carry around a big heavy suitcase and look like a super dorky tourist. You can just be your normal dorky self. You don't have to wait for the bag to come through the luggage and carousel once you get off the plane. And I can tell you I've traveled uh, many, many times uh, for days to a couple weeks to over 30 days with just a carry-on only. And I've never really wanted any more space. So it can be done and it's very, it's very good. Number 11, try to bring clothes that have zipped pockets. Minimum two per outfit to hold your passport in one and cash and cards in the other. So if you have a pair of shorts that has two pockets, you can wear a normal synthetic t-shirt. If you have one pocket on your pants, then you want to have a shirt that has a pocket in it. The reason is you want to be able to separate your passport and keep that in a pocket you're not going to be accessing, but you have it on you in case you need it to have um, to show ID. <clears throat> Tip number 12. I always bring sandals for hot places, but I also want to bring a lightweight pair of shoes. There are so many, so many reasons for this, but from personal experience, I can tell you, particularly in hot, sweaty, tropical type places that don't have, you know, developing countries or cities, there's dirt, uh, there's mosquitoes and bugs that bite you. You end up scratching your foot or scratching your leg. And ultimately what happens when you have a a scratch on your foot and your foot's not staying clean because you're walking around in sandals on dirty streets, you're going to get a foot infection. I've had, I've had a little bug bite turn into a, a full-blown foot infection a couple times and I learned the hard way that you want to have a pair of sandals for when it's really hot and you want to have sandals, but also bring a lightweight pair of shoes because they protect your feet and you can keep them cleaner that way and occasionally your feet get sore if you walk really far in those sandals. Tip number 13. Always bring a small lens cloth. It might seem kind of silly, but this little thing is actually really good. For so many of us, we're taking pictures, we're taking video, um, using our phones, cameras, GoPros, other devices, maybe your sunglasses, even your sunglasses, it could be used to clean those. But if you clean those lenses, you're going to get better pictures. Um, you get the grease off of your phone, things look better. And if you have your glasses clean, you can see better. So it's just a really handy thing. 
Tip number 14. Bring a waterproof pack cover or a garbage bag for your bag if you don't want to spend the money on one of these fancy um, outer pack covers. If you're in a tropical or semi-tropical country, you can get trapped in a downpour. If you don't have something to cover your bag, your stuff's going to get all wet and you're not going to be a happy camper. If your phone's not waterproof like some of the newer ones, and even if it, even if it is, bring yourself a Ziploc bag so you can put your passport, money, and your phone in there. Protect it in case you get stuck in that same um, thunderstorm. And the final and last tip, number 15, this is something that weighs nothing but is the most important tip. Bring your best mental attitude. Problems that come up, um, they can be seen as challenges to solve. They can make things interesting and fun. If you have a good attitude, you can get through almost anything. And things always do come up. Uh, I told you guys I'd tell you what happened and why you always want to have two debit cards. Uh, this last trip, I put my debit card in a machine. I think I might have entered my pin wrong one too many times. I uh, had a few drinks, so that's possible I was pressing the wrong keys. Who the heck knows? But I ended up not having a debit card, and I didn't have a backup where I had... I had previously brought two debit cards. So I was able to go and f track down the bank the next day, but it, it took a lot of, a lot of uh, kind of problem solving and research on the internet to find their headquarters, having the hotel call the uh, bank. They spoke Khmer. I don't speak Khmer, I was in Cambodia. I was finally able to get my card back. But if I didn't, if I didn't, have, uh, if I didn't have that problem solving and good mental attitude, I wouldn't have been able to fix it. And if I had a second debit card, it wouldn't have been as critical. So thank you and hope you enjoy these tips.